Another way that we can show energy within an ecosystem is through an ecological pyramid. Now, an ecological pyramid is a way to illustrate ecosystems. And ecologists use three different types of pyramids to show this picture, this illustration. The first one is what we call a pyramid of energy. And what a pyramid of energy represents is how much energy is available at each trophic level. Now remember, we've already talked about trophic levels, and a pyramid of energy looks really like a typical traditional pyramid. Larger at the bottom, smaller at the top. Looks very similar to our triangle for trophic levels. The bottom level is the producers, followed by herbivores, carnivores, etc., working our way up to the tertiary consumers, the top of the ecological pyramid. Now, as we work our way up, the energy that's transferred from one level to the next only represents about 10%. So only about 10% of the producer's energy gets passed on to the herbivores, and that 10% gets passed on to the small carnivores, etc. Most of the energy is used up. Now what this does is limit the number of trophic levels. We just can't have an unlimited supply of energy. It runs out, so we only work our way up to the large carnivores because we eventually run out of energy. The rest of the energy, though, is used up by the organisms. Used up for things such as movement, or heat, or reproduction. All of those things that we require energy gets used up. That 90% is used up, and only 10% is passed on. Another kind of pyramid is called a pyramid of numbers. And a pyramid of numbers is very useful if we want the actual number of organisms present in each trophic level. The shape of a pyramid of numbers actually depends on the physical size of the producers. So we don't always have a traditional pyramid shape. Let's look at an example here, the grassland. So if we have a pyramid of numbers, if we look at the first trophic level in the grassland, down here we have 100,000 grasses. And that's represented by the green cube. Now those 100,000 grasses can actually support 50,000 grasshoppers. We're using the actual numbers. Now those 50,000 grasshopper snails and slugs can actually support 105 shrews. And if we work our way up to the higher trophic level, we get down to nine owls. So using the pyramid of numbers, we can see that it takes 100,000 grasses to support nine owls. Now if we were looking at a pyramid of numbers for let's say a forest, the pyramid looks a little bit different, not a traditional pyramid shape. In a forest, the bottom level here is just 50 trees. That's all that we start out with. Now those 50 trees can support 100,000 insects, which can then support 105 ladybugs, which then can support three robins, and if we look at the top of this trophic level, the fifth trophic level, that supports one falcon. So we can see the relationship. 50 trees supports one falcon. And understanding the numbers can sometimes come in handy when we're describing an ecosystem. The third type is a pyramid of biomass. And a pyramid of biomass represents the actual total mass of things living at an each trophic level. This is usually a standard pyramid shape, where the larger mass is on the bottom and the smaller mass is on the top. Now the exception to this is if we were looking at an aquatic system, a water system. Water, or aquatic systems, the pyramid is actually flipped over, inverted. A really small mass of producers can actually support a really large mass of consumers. And the reason? The producers produce so rapidly. So the algae, or the phytoplankton can grow very, very quickly and reproduce very, very quickly. Well, a typical pyramid of biomass would look something like this. And here we are looking at a peat bog. So if we were studying this peat bog, we could see that 976 kilograms of moss and algae support 45 kilograms of duck, which support 9 kilograms of falcon. And so again, we see a relationship between the 976 kilograms to 9 kilograms of falcon. 
And the pyramid of biomass might come in handy if we're deciding to take moss and algae out of the peat bog. We can figure out if we take out a certain number of kilograms, how many kilograms of falcon that will eliminate. So just another way to represent the numbers. And each of these pyramids has a specific use depending on what we're trying to determine or describe within the ecosystem.